Um, let's, I don't know if there's really battles at every position, and we don't have to name every single one, but at least on screen, you're going to see some of the new additions, if you can read it past the damn trademark for XSplit, excuse me. But uh, let's talk some battles and, and you know, the new additions while we look at this. So let's start with wide receivers. Uh, returning players, Hunter Renfro, Tyron Johnson, Dylan Stoner, DJ Turner. I mean, that's not a lot of returning players, but... The new additions of Devontae Adams, Keelan Cole, Demarcus Robinson, Mac Hollins, uh, Jordan something. <laughs> Jordan X Split. Yeah, Jordan X Split and Justin yeah. Hall. Uh, if there's a battle there, maybe for the third or fourth wide receiver, you got any? I think the battle's at number two. Because, you know, you got Renfro as your slot machine, as the kids call him, the greatest player of all time. And uh, and then you of course you've got uh, uh, Devonte Adams now gonna gonna handle the number one spot uh, or the what is that the Y as the coach would say um, or no the X so you got the Y as your number two and I think that's what's going to be interesting so um, my money is on Demarcus Robinson but Mac Hollins could be in play for that I don't think Keelan Cole is going to be there i think it's probably going to come down to mac and and, and uh and uh, demarcus but that's going to be an interesting one because you know and when you think about the weaponry that we're going to have now so whoever that uh, number two is going to be to uh go uh, you know on the other side of of Devonte and then renfro and waller man dude i'm this offense is going to be insane i mean because you can't you double somebody, someone's going to be open. And even if you really start backing up players into coverage, man, then the running game is going to get loose. And so it's this is going to be an amazing, uh, you know, offensive explosion for the Raiders and Yana. So I think that number two spot at wide receiver is, is going to be very interesting because I don't think you put in – I know technically Renfro might be the number two guy, especially in terms of, like, targets or uh, whatnot. But in terms of, like, where they're at on the field, he's not. He's a slut guy. And so uh, that's going to be really, really interesting to see how that, that one plays out there. And, and, again, my money's on Robinson. Yeah, a lot of the names on screen are filler, whatever that means to you guys. Last year I predicted – I predicted Willie Speed to be like the n number two or number three because a couple years ago I predicted Aguilar to have one of the best statistical seasons for the Raiders. And then last year I predicted Willie Sneed. Boy, was I wrong there. Uh, but I didn't expect as much as, as Hunter Renfro did. He basically solidified himself as one of the returning stars in the NFL, and I'm so proud that he got a new contract. And I love Devontae Adams. We don't need to place him at number one because he is – but Demarcus Robinson is going to be the clear favorite in my mind to be the number two just because he has history with Kansas City. He was their number two there for most of the years he was there. Uh, but I'm hoping for a, a position battle from some of the other players. But again, I think it's going to be Renfro, Adams, and Robinson as possibly the starting three. So, yeah, I think that's it. Absolutely. You know, Robinson's is still young, too. He's only 27 years old, so he's still got, you know, plenty of juice left. He's fast as hell, you know what I mean? So talk about stretching the field, man. I think it's going to be great. Returning players, Derek Carr. And the battle at this position would be for the backup. Uh, too bad we lost, you know, uh, I can't even think of names right now. Tua, not Tua. Oh, you're talking about Marcus Mariota? Thank you, M.M. Uh, but we got Jared Stidham on the roster, Nick Mullins, and Chase Garbers is a rookie, hence the red star. Uh, I don't, I'm not very proud of our backup uh, position. I always want a veteran. You know, so I wish like a Ryan Fitzpatrick or, it sounds stupid, people can hate me. I wish a Baker Mayfield would want to be a backup for the Raiders or, you know, somebody like that. But, uh. We got Nick Mullins, who whooped our butt, I believe, with the 49ers he sure maybe did. two or three years ago. Uh, uh, and again, a couple I times he kicked our ass, yeah. I don't know how Jared Stidham keeps making a roster. Maybe it's because of the New England connection with our our coaching staff. But I think so. I think 100%. I think Nick Mullins is going to be the third. Jared Stidham will be the second. Uh, I, I, I believe the, the New England connection – with Jared Stidham, will make him the the favorite for number two for the back of the car. Yeah, I'm with you on on having a veteran uh, guy as your as your backup. I'm I'm with that. You know, I loved 
you know, look, we saw what uh, what Mariota did when he came in in relief of Derek Carr against the Chargers, man. Balled out. Yeah, the Raiders lost that game, but, man, he had a great game. And, you know, unfortunately, for whatever reason, the Raiders can never figure out a way to use him in the red zone, which was, I mean, talk about a freaking. It's John Gruden. It was so ridiculous, man. It's like you, you have all these woes in the red zone, and then you have this guy that, like, literally you can't match up for, and and they didn't use him nearly enough. But anyways, I digress. Um, I do like the idea of having a veteran. I guess Nick Mullins kind of fits that, but I think of more like an like an like a cagey guy, like a like a Chad Henney or like Josh McCown or like a guy like that, somebody that's been around the league, like you said, Fitzpatrick, someone that's been in the league for a million years and like knows all the systems, can read a defense. Like those are the kind of guys that I like to see. I don't like to see like Connor Cooks, where you got like developing guys. We saw how that worked out when we had freaking Matt McGloin and Connor Cook. I like uh, and- Matt McGloin until he actually played. Yeah, until he played, and then he got his world rocked and sucked. And like, and that's the thing is that like, and this what this quarterback room is eerily reminiscent of, of that. that. And and mm-hmm. like, and I'm just saying, like, again, I'm not going to speak this over him, but Derek Carr better be well freaking protected this year because we cannot afford that man go down with these guys as backups. Like, you don't, you know, quarterback position is already the most important position in all of sports anyways. When you look at this quarterback room, Marcus Mariota is not in there to come and help us out again. You know, like I said, or not even a Josh McCown. Josh McCown did great coming in in relief. Like, we've had good backup quarterback. These guys, I don't have a ton of faith in any of them. I guess maybe Mullins, but that's only because he beat the crap out of us a a couple times and, you know, I don't know how good he I don't really watch a lot of Niner games or otherwise, you know, if I haven't followed his career too tightly other than the times he played the Raiders. So, I don't know, maybe he's he's a, a fitting QB. But, uh, yeah, no, this makes me a little nervous uh, by not having, having the yeah, vet. That let me end it with this. Uh, again, on paper, it doesn't look like the best roster. But with our coaching staff and what they did in New England with the backups there, on occasion when Tom Brady was not available and last season with their new rookie quarterback, I believe they can actually coach quarterbacks to hopefully win a game or two and be the best system quarterbacks that they can be. So with our new staff, I have faith in them and I'm going to trust their choices. I didn't trust Gruden. You know, that's a good call out Mikey. And and I'll never forget, you know, when, Tom Brady got hurt as a member of the Patriots and Matt Castle came in and, and, you know, they went like, what, they went freaking like 12 and four or something like that with him. And they missed the playoffs, but only, I mean, narrowly and and likely shouldn't have have missed the playoffs and all other, you know, years to account for. But uh, anyways, but like, you know, and then Matt Castle went on to do dog crap everywhere else he ever played after that. And so you're right that like that, system that Josh McDaniels is bringing that offensive system it's kind of set up for a quarterback to be successful in and so maybe it will translate better to a backup but hopefully we don't even have to worry about it I mean hopefully he, took, it's not- he took a rookie quarterback last year that a lot of people thought was probably the fifth best rookie quarterback that was a project and he turned him basically into a winning system quarterback for last season with That's now he point. has the potential of being a, a decent quarterback that's a very, very good point. You're right. He came in, um, you know, the least ballyhooed of the of the quarterbacks and arguably had the best season. So great call out there, Mikey. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Uh, so I trust the coaches. I really love the coaching staff. I am, again, I'm so proud Con Gruden is gone as the coach. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to this new regime. I've never had this feeling for a new regime, um, even when Del Rio came in or Dennis Allen or of the recent i've never had this feeling and i hate that it's you know from the patriot legacy but goodness if we're going to build a legacy in vegas let's start with these coaches uh position battle tight end darren waller number one i don't believe he's still gotten a contract yet uh but foster moreau and nick bowers we got a bauer on the team jacob hollister the new addition jesper explit <laughs> and cole forthingham <laughs> is our new additions uh i don't see any battle there even for number two foster moreau and waller maybe in that new england system of tight ends will be used a lot more so what are your thoughts on tight end 
Yeah, I mean, Darren, it's Darren Waller and then everybody else, right? Um, Foster Moreau's, uh, I don't know, he's kind of an interesting player to, to, to follow because he's clearly not as, you know, as athletic and whatever. He's more like the, I mean, he's not a, like a Lee Smith. He's not just like a big bulking tight end that's in the middle of the block. He's got some pass catching ability and some route running ability. But this isn't the, you know, this isn't Aaron Hernandez and Gronk here with Waller and Moreau. I think that it's it's Waller and then, you know, fosters a, a, a distant second. Now, this is a contract year for him. So this will be interesting to watch and see how he, um, you know, how he plays this year. But also, too, like, there's a lot of freaking targets to go around. You know, we talked about the wide receivers, but, you know, for the most part, you know, Darren Waller was the number one featured player in our offense um, for a long time. And, and you know, he, he won't be. He took a step down last year. He took a step well, down. And he, and he got hurt. You know what I mean? And, and you never can judge players on injuries. And so he did He did get beat up pretty good last year and, and really did kind of gutted out an effort against the Chargers. He probably shouldn't even have been on the field uh, in, in that game. But um, anyways, the point being, though, is that, you know, it's after Devontae Adams, it's him is, is, is likely going to be the go-to. And then, oh, yeah, Hunter Infro and then all the rest of these guys we're talking about. So, um, so in terms of, like, seeing, like, a – you know, a, a twin tight end thing with him and Foster. I'm not sure if Foster's quite to that level. What will be interesting is this, is that one of the things that I, I loved about the New England offense is that they were so good at, and, and don't get me wrong, I'm not saying this as, as an admirer of the Patriots, but I'm just in terms of respecting what they do from a coaching perspective as an NFL fan, as a football fan, because I know fans sometimes, Raider fans, give me a hard time. They're like, oh, you like the Patriots. Well, I don't, I don't like them at all. I just respect what they did because they've been winning for a long time. Um, so one of the things that Belichick and, and especially Josh McDaniels, one of the things that they do so brilliantly is that they beat you a different way every week, you know, one week it's the running game. One week it's the tight ends. One week it was Wes Welker or Amendola or you know what I mean, whatever, whatever other five nine white dude they had in the building. Like, you know what I mean? Like, there's that they're, they're so unique to how they would approach the game. They would adapt. They're not running like a static offense and sticking to certain things like John Gruden did or like Gus Bradley did on defense. And we're going to talk about defense here in a minute. But like, they are constantly fluid and adapting and moving and changing so there might be a game or two where waller and moreau go off but are they gonna be like featured players in the offense i don't think so other than waller uh, on it on his own good sentiment uh, for some reason when you said the word belichick my body like literally farted <laughs> like you said belichick my body went <laughs> I just thought that was interesting. Uh, position. I like Foster Moreau. I, I really think he's gonna. He's a great compliment to Darren Waller. I really like him. He kind of reminds me of that uh, Texans tight end. You know, like a poor man's version of the Texan. Not Texans. Um, Baltimore Ravens tight end. Mark, oh yeah, Mark, Mark Andrews. Andrews. He kind of reminds you. me like a poor man of him. That's that a good comparison. Yeah, it's a good comparison, Mikey. I like Foster Moreau. Uh, returning players on the defensive line, and there weren't that many uh, good ones. Uh, Max Crosby, Cleveland Farrell, did not have his fifth year option picked up, so I'm going to technically say this is his final year. Max Crosby got a new contract. We got another Bauer on the team to Sean Bauer that they picked up late last season. Kendall Vickers that played a couple of games but was injured. They put him in here and there. Then Jonathan Hankins, thank goodness he resigned. He was a, one of the best um, defensive line players we had last year. And then Malcolm Kunch. And the new additions were the big one. Got rid of Yannick Ngakwe, your MVP from last season for on defense. Uh, that yes. didn't pan out. Trust me, I get it wrong too, Murph. <laughs> uh, Chandler no. Jones is coming. Chandler Jones is coming in. Uh, Bilal Nichols, Jerry Green. My, who? Myra Namosa, a rookie. Zach Vangelberg. Uh, Neil Farrell. Well, we got another Farrell on From the, the team. the famous team. Flying Vangelbergers. The, <laughs> prob they probably are. I, made that up. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, Tyler Lancaster. Andrew Billings. Matthew Butler. Uh, X Split Butler. There's two Butlers on the team. <laughs> and then Kyle Pico is an, an oh, interesting player. Pico, man. Team. That's a good one. Yeah. Uh, so any, well, there, there's going to be battles all over the board, all over, 
well, all over for here, except for Max Crosby and Chandler Jones. There basically. you go, yeah, yeah. But we have like a million defensive tackles that we're going to try to figure out which one fits. Uh, so will it be Clayling Farrell, Bauer, whoever are the listed tackles? What say you on this position battle? Well, I love Kyle Pecco. I think that's, a, you know, I mentioned earlier, I live just outside of Nashville, Tennessee, and have a lot of exposure to the, to the Tennessee Titans. And uh, that dude was a freaking dog, man. Like, he's a great player. And, uh, you know, he's kind of like, the, like he reminds me of, of, the, of the defensive tackles that we've been bringing in. He's like kind of like gritty veterans, you know, that are like solid, but they're not superstars. And like, but, but he's young, though. So I, I think that there's a, there's a, a bright future for Kyle Pecco. So I'm, I'm kind of rooting for him. Uh, but after that, like, yeah, you're right, man. It's a kind of like... A, Hopefully it's not a revolving door. Hopefully they find some good chemistry in there. But this, the whole thing, all this is, the guys on the interior are just there to suck up blocks. Like, ultimately, that's what it's going to be. If we can get some interior pressure, great. And and we saw that last year with, with Solomon Thomas and, and Quentin Jefferson. Got a lot of interior pressure. But this starts and stops with Max and Chandler Jones. Like, that's the end. So, who can suck up blocks to hopefully get those guys some one-on-ones and let the freaking let them go eat, man. And I just, the, it, if I know every Raider fan is ex- incredibly excited about this new duo that we have with Jones and, and Crosby, man. I mean, we were excited last year with Ngakwe. And like you said, I said he was going to be MVP. Of course, you could probably give that to maybe a Casey Hayward, if not Max Crosby. Um, but there's, again, same I thing. I predicted Nate Hobbs. And that was a great call out. Got lucky. Some injuries and things. Yeah, I mean, he played great. Um, and and I think he's going to shine. I, I'll wait to wait, say that until we talk about the. Jonathan Hankins will be will be the de facto starting defensive tackle, even though so. they're going to mix and match. And but- Vickers, Vickers was solid, you know. But again, these guys are just taking a block. I think what's going to be interesting is that the, the 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 wild card and all these on here. Well, actually, there's two of them. One of them is Malcolm Kuntz because. You know, coming from Buffalo, like Khalil Mack did, and like, you know, similar, you know, body type, and like, like everybody was kind of thinking, like, oh, could he emerge? I don't know. So he's still a very young man and still very developing. So that's an interesting Coons one. keep coming into my front yard. But also, Cleveland Farrell, dude. Cleveland Farrell, like that, this is it, man. The, he's like, gone, he barely got in the mix. He's, I, this is, I mean, he, he might, might even be let go in training camp, depending on that's what, I'm what thinking, the coach man. you see. Yeah, he might get a flyer from someone somewhere uh, after that, but I mean, this it's it sucks because I'm really root for the guy, you know what I mean? And and you know, being the, the such a high pick and everything, you want to see him do well. But I don't know, man. That's this is it. 